Hey everybody, welcome to The Recoup. I'm Cooper Daniels, and I'm a guy that knows a little about a lot. And today, I've got a great one for you folks. I am talking to Adam Hoffman. He is the founder and CEO of Nimble Insurance. It's That's a right. decentralized insurance platform built on the Algorand blockchain, right, Adam? That's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good, man. How about you? Yeah. So for anybody out there that doesn't know, I'm actually community managing for Nimble. So, you know, know that. And by the way, you could join the Discord. <laughs> the link will be in the description of this video. But anyways, <laughs> moving on. Adam. So, okay. I want to I want to kind of just dive right in. And, and before we talk about decentralized insurance and we talk about Algorand and we talk about all the different use cases for this, and why it's revolutionary. Um, let's get to know a little bit more about you. So yeah. how did you get to kind of crypto in general and, and land on Algorand for your product? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. I think probably like everyone else, um, the rabbit hole, it, it, it's real. Like you get sucked into it, right, for, uh, for, this, for this world. Um, but yeah, thanks for having me, Coop. I, I'm yeah. psyched to be here. But for me, the way I got, in it was a little bit different. So um, I spent 22 years in traditional insurance space. So doing all kinds of different roles in that space. Um, but prior to that, I actually went to Berkeley College of Music. I did the music thing. So mm -hmm. I had that music head on the entire time that I built my career in insurance and um, things that didn't make any sense when I joined, like started my career there, 22 years later made less sense because the more you want, the more you get to know about insurance, you don't ever have those aha, or I didn't have those aha moments of like, oh, that's why this is confusing. It was just instead right. like, no, wait, but you could change that. No, but you could change that. You could. So that, that um, stuck with me in my career. And when I started reading about really blockchain in the decentralization for me it wasn't about crypto and the money it was more about the blockchain and the decentralization and i saw that as just like wow what a cool way to you know give voice to people that don't have a voice or give opportunities to people that don't have an opportunity mm -hmm. and that's when i had the aha moment <laughs> was like oh wait a minute <laughs> what a perfect yeah. vehicle to fix some of the problems in insurance and, and that's and that's how i got at least that's how i got to blockchain got it and so yeah, I mean, if I you said Berkeley School of Music, and um, I I do know that this started with just the idea of insuring instruments, right? Yeah. So when I had the aha moment of like decentralization and insurance, I'm I'm um, I have big ideas and big thoughts, but sometimes sometimes I can bring them back down to earth. And this yeah. was a case where I could, and I was like, well, I can't. We can't build something that goes after the entire insurance industry because it's just mammoth right and it's right. regulated and you can't get a car and then any insurance you want it has to be approved so i started yeah. thinking about use cases and of course because music in my life and the stories i've heard of you know people's music equipment getting stolen or the amount of money they pay to go on tour and insure themselves i started to think about that and i said oh that's a good niche that's a good use case um it can help out a group of people that you know don't have many options right now so that's how that came to be. And because um, yeah. my vision and still is with Nimble, as you know, Coop, is like, it isn't just about insuring, like decentralized insurance isn't just about insuring DeFi projects. What right. I believe decentralized insurance is, is a new way forward for insurance. Right. So that idea of trying to find a real property, not like a, you know, uh, a Web3 kind of um, insurance, but real tangible property insurance was important. So that's that's how I started there. That's how you started. So what made you, I mean, I, I imagine knowing what the product is, is that that type of um, insurance can still exist on Nimble, but it is widening the tent and the focus a little bit. So mm -hmm. what made you transition from just that to something larger, which is now, I mean, at, at launch, um, Nimble will be insuring like smart contract risk and, you know, your digital assets and things right. like that. So what, what got you from instruments to DeFi um, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and Algorand. Yeah. Great question. So um, <laughs> kudos to the team at the time, like the founding team of Nimble, because we had put in a lot of work on what we were calling snap appraisal and it's super mm -hmm. cool. So it was the ability to take a picture of a guitar and then the algorithms behind it, the Xavier developed, 
the guitar could be identified by make and model. And then we could identify what the value of that guitar is. So mm -hmm. all of that's super cool. But what we realized quickly was, wait, 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 we're not building an insurance company like product specific. We're building the rails for anybody to insure anything. And we can talk about that later, but anybody yeah. to insure anything. So we don't need to start with this use case, a, a, a more, um, you know, an easier use case is to start with DeFi because people participating in DeFi projects understand it already. You kind of remove the onboarding hurdle, but yeah. you're building to that point where now we can show how it works and prove that it works and continue to scale and iterate. So uh, got it. That's, that's so, why we think See, I understand. So, you know, you're insuring instruments, right? And, but the people that may need that insurance have no idea about blockchain, cryptocurrency, and how any of this decentralized, these decentralized systems work. Yep. So that's such a harder sell. And you're like, okay, well, wait a second. We can start with the people that are already in this, yeah. that know, know the risk of certain things, and this will actually provide value. So, yeah. We, and we, just yeah. To, sorry to interrupt, but like, and also the people who would like to get into it and they're willing to get into it, but they're a little worried because there's no insurance mechanism in place. So that Absolutely. was kind of the, you know, it, it, it handles both of those things. Right. And I'm sure there's also some uh, crypto savvy people out there that, you know, play instruments as well. But yeah, right. um, <laughs> so, guess. okay, let's, before we really kind of get to the details of, the product and what it is going to look like. Why don't we just talk a little bit about insurance? Like, and I don't want to spend too much time on this because it, I potentially could get very boring. <laughs> I understand. Potentially, but, <laughs> I think it's a guarantee. <laughs> yeah. So, but maybe you can, why don't you just kind of break it down real quick? Like what is the problem with traditional insurance <laughs> that, that blockchain uh, or decentralized insurance is solving? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to laugh because it wasn't the question I was laughing at. I was laughing at the <laughs> scale of which I could answer the question. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, you want me to keep this short? The problem with insurance? Okay. How do see. I love thee? Let me count thy way. You know, what are the yeah. problems? So, you know, one of the one of the ways that I ins explain insurance because I'm not saying it happens intentionally, but sometimes it feels like to me that we overcomplicate insurance to kind of protect protect that guard of like, you don't get why it's so complicated. You just need us. But if we right. rewind back to like first use cases of insurance, you had Chinese merchants who were delivering goods on boats, right? So that's how they did it. And they mm -hmm. had the ingenious idea of, well, wait a minute, if all five of us are shipping goods and we're worried that one of the boats sinks, right? So if all my goods are on my boat and my boat sinks, I'm kind of screwed because now all my goods are gone. Right. But you're in the same boat, no pun intended. You're in the same situation, right? Yeah. And so are the other five merchants. They have this idea that, well, then why don't we just split up our cargo and our merchandise among the ships? So, mm. you know, in current terms, if I had five pallets on my ship, one pallet was mine and the other four were other people's. If it goes down, we all lose one pallet. We don't lose right. everything we got. So got it. that to me is the clearest example of insurance. Yeah. So really now what insurance is, is that same promise that we're making to each other to, you know, cover my car accident or cover my staking into a protocol, but we're making that with the intermediary, which yes. is the insurance company who capitalizes, makes sure there's money, but that's where the problems come in because, and, and it's not intent, it, this was not intentional. It, it uh, Regulation started to protect people, but what happened was, that's 300 years ago. So like nothing much has changed since. So now we have this system where initially insurance was built on trust, that it's still built on trust, but with tons of overhead and bloat in that intermediary yeah. process because right. they have to educate their employees and they have to hire employees and they have to have underwriters and actuaries and all, the, all these people. Like when you give $100 to an insurance company, they have to figure into their rates how much of that is going to, you know, keep the business operating. So right. that's expensive. Yeah. And, and even the an problem. Yeah. And even if these insurance companies are the most honest, you know, institutions in the land, it's right. still ripe for being disrupted because of what you're saying 
of like so much overhead, so many people in the middle, people that are having to, you know, file papers and do, do whatever it is that they have to do. And there's a, a better way, right? So yeah. the idea, what? so what is the basic idea behind decentralized insurance? And I mean, yeah. I think it's pretty clear, but you know. No, no, I think it's important because, you know, and, and we talk about this all the time, Coop, like, all of us, like, you know, with Nimble, wherever we're at is like, it's important to know what the basics of insurance are. So check, we did that. <laughs> but then <laughs> why decentralized, right? right? I think the easiest way for me to explain it is if you think of traditional insurance now, it's, uh, it's kind of like a, a feedback loop, right? Or a disincentive loop, where right. we go... You, one the, like the first rule of what is it? The first rule of Fight Club is like don't talk about Fight Club or whatever. Club. Yeah, yeah, the first rule of being in the insurance industry is don't tell anybody at a cookout that you're in the insurance industry because right. immediately it's like, oh my god, why is this happening? This yeah, so we know that narrative, right? Consumers are like, why are the rates going up? I haven't ever seen them going down. The insurance yeah. companies then defend themselves because it's expensive because we can't do that, and then you have a claim and it takes a long time. And it, it just becomes this disincentive loop because then you get back to renewal time and your rates are up again. And you're like, here we go again, right? Yeah. So what decentralization can do is to kind of smash that disincentive loop and instead create an incentive loop where employees of the traditional insurance process don't have to be employees of Nimble. They can be right. work autonomously decentralized, do all the amazing things they need to do. But the company doesn't carry the overhead, which means that the the money set aside to pay claims is just money set aside to pay claims. And that Got keeps it. everything more efficient. And, and, you know, part of it is because of blockchain technology. Like now we can, we can execute on quick transactions and not every policy has to be a year long and right. you can split a penny, you know, things that we couldn't yeah. do before that now you can do. Right, exactly. You can split a penny. That's absolutely right. And so, okay. So the way this is, so how risk pools, right? So maybe break down what a risk pool is and how people are going to be able to participate in those and how this starts to create a system where there's an incentive to, to contribute to the risk pool and, mm -hmm. you know, how, so maybe break down that incentive loop a little more to the sure. granule lever. Yeah. Sure. So like, we'll use that use case again. I, you know, I'm about to pay my car insurance bill and I give the company a hundred dollars. Now you mm -hmm. picture that hundred dollars and, you know, let's say half of it goes um, in a, a bucket to pay claims in the event that there's claims. The other half of it goes to pay staff and overhead and keep the lights on, whatever. That's how right. that works. So that bucket of money is a risk pool. That's, that's how I envision a risk pool. Like basically a pool full of money. <laughs> yeah. Right. To yeah. cover, right. So yeah. a risk pool in a decentralized system is that it's the middle of the entire life cycle of insurance. So it's a bucket of money that's sitting there so that if right. Cooper has a claim, there's money that can come out of that via smart contract and and make you what in insurance they say, make you whole again, like get you mm -hmm. back to where you were. So right. that's the concept. Um, you know, what happens is we see some of the other protocols or insurance, um, decentralized insurance, really going hard at the DeFi aspect of that, which is just, you know, you're hedging a little bit, right? You're saying the losses look good. We're willing to take two times the risk, let's just say. So that means if I know that the maximum I can pay out in a claim because of everybody who belongs in that risk pool mm -hmm. is $100,000, well, what's the likelihood that everyone's going to suffer a loss at once? Right. Maybe it's not good. So then we're willing to keep just $50,000 in that risk pool. And that's why you don't have to keep the exact amount of the total risk. This is way too much. <laughs> no, but, no, it's good. Yeah. Right? So, right. so what decentralized allows you to do is still use the rating processes from insurance and get away from that hedging mechanism and more to a, what is the rates? And we can talk more about what each of those roles are. But what yeah. Nimble is, is allowing those rates to be transparent, to really reflect, is there going to be a loss? Is this, mm -hmm. is, is Cooper's um, project riskier than Adam's project? And if so, right. the rate should reflect that. Right. The idea of risk pools also creates separation. So if we're insuring users who are staking money 
into the coop you know nft <laughs> project right <laughs> yeah. it's not going to be the same rate as someone who's staking into the yet to be released adam hoffman nft <laughs> community, right. right like yeah. there might be different reasons why maybe i don't do audits maybe i'm like i don't even care about security so yeah. it allows you to be protected for all the good things you've been doing and then your community to be protected okay and I, I do want to, we're going to talk about like the token and how that plays into everything in, this, in, in, in a few minutes, but like, let's just, just so people really kind of understand the product here, let's, Tiny Man is a partner here, right? Yes. So upon launch, uh, Tiny Man is going to be a, a partner. Yes. And that's been announced. I'm not revealing anything. Right. Right, so right, right. how, maybe, how is it going to work? Like, what are people going, what kind of insurance are they going to be buying? And, you know. How does the Tiny Man partnership work? Okay, so perfect example. So Tiny Man will be a risk pool, the Tiny Man risk pool. So right. that will operate independently of any of the other partner projects. So that means exactly. that there's at least there's security there, right? right? That if someone else's project is hacked, it doesn't impact this. So right. what will happen is as a partner project, we will initially do the baseline underwriting and actuarial work to make sure that they're getting the best rate. Now, right. we don't pass that cost off to them in rating. So what Nimble does in-house at the beginning isn't then factored into, you know, the rates more expensive now because we spend money. That's not how it works. So then that risk pool set up and we say, I don't, let's just use a number like 3%, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to stake name any number you want into Al, uh, into tiny man, you would be able to ensure that. So you could say, I'm going to stake for 180 days. I want 10,000 algo cover for 180 days. And you would pay, you know, two, 3% of that would be your premium. Mm -hmm. So that's how that works. So as a user, I'm protected. The pool, that risk pool is funded by other investors, LPs, like any liquidity pool really. And yeah. they're in, they're going to get the APY that's generated, but they're also going to get that premium that's paid. So it goes back to the old school Lloyd's of London days where like, I'd say, all right, we're not just shipping in China now we're shipping overseas. So I'll cover it if something happens, but you're paying your premiums to me. It's my fee. It's for taking right. the risk. So we're creating that. So it isn't just super rich people who can invest in the tiny man risk pool. It could be right. anything. You could put 5,000 right. in, you could put 100,000, you can do whatever you want and you right. get a portion of those premiums. Well, and there's a reason why, you know, people like Warren Buffett um, and, you know, invest in insurance companies because the insurance company usually wins, correct? Yeah. I mean, that's- it, yeah. it is, yeah. And that's exactly it, right? So, you know, I've been in this precarious situation in, in my past where it's like, I don't always, I don't throw insurance companies under the, under the bus because I believe they're relevant and necessary, but they don't do a lot to help themselves and explain what they're doing. So yeah, yeah insurance companies make money because all that money they have in the risk pool, I shouldn't say all of it, but we'll say a portion of the money they have in their quote unquote risk pool is invested. Right. And that regenerates a return, but that return isn't given back to Cooper and Adam who are insured. Yeah. It's given back to the corporation and the, and the shareholders. So that's where they win. They win on that investment there. And there's also something unique that you announced at Consensus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the Algorand Foundation um, collaboration and partnership. Yep. So how does that work? What? How does that fit into maybe our Tiny Man example? Yeah, that's a great example. So let's use the Tiny Man example. So Algorand Foundation, we've been talking or I've been talking with them for a while. Um, and I didn't mean to skirt the question before where you asked about why Algorand. So we'll talk about that later. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize I never answered that. <laughs> Um, yeah, we're good. But like, um, so the Algorand Foundation has been very supportive and we've had lots of conversations. Uh, we're on the same page that in order to get to a level of institutional capital in the system and then more adoption, there needs to be a level of um, ecosystem wide security that exists. Right. So we've been right. playing around with how to address that. And what eventually we came up with was a partnership where the Algorand Foundation will pay. 50% of the premiums for any users buying insurance through Nimble for an Algorand project. Mm -hmm. So in the tiny man example, 10,000 algo worth you want coverage for, it's at 3%.
So 3% of 10,000 is 300 bucks, I think, right? <laughs> 300 yeah, or 300. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so 300, 300 algo. Yeah, 300 yeah. algo, right? <laughs> Much um, less than 300 bucks right now. That's okay. Yeah, I know, yeah. unfortunately. So <laughs> yeah, you pay okay. 300 algo, but the Algorand Foundation is picking up 50% of that. So your premium goes from 300 algo to your cost 150. On wow. top of that, the partners have a have the option to also kick in a percentage. And we right. can talk about why that makes sense to a project and why that makes sense to a user. But so you could yeah. have a situation where your $300 premium is discounted 75%. Yeah. And then it's kind of like a no brainer. Yeah. Let's get coverage in the event that yeah. something happens, you know, and the LPs who are dropping money into those risk pools, they're, they're now guaranteed these premiums from, so it's, again, this is an incentive yeah. loop instead of a disincentive loop. Absolutely. And one of those reasons that what your partners um, may want to is that oftentimes when you see these hacks or these exploits, um, it's on those projects to reimburse all their users. So yes. they, so insurance is probably very appealing to them as well. They're like, yes. oh yeah, you, you want to partner with us? Yeah, let's partner. <laughs> yeah. And that's Cooper. That's why we always say rethink insurance. Because we could just say, like in the, in the traditional space, we could just say, all right, you have personal liability and you go buy that policy. And then you have uh, business liability and you go by that policy. We yes. can still do that, but there's this concept in insurance uh, in, in you know, um, risk advising and risk management of the different ways in which you can handle risk. And one of them is to, to transfer that risk. In yeah. this way, what you're doing is creating a cost-effective way to transfer the risk. So we'll use just a, a made up protocol, you know, that Algorand Finance is, is now a protocol and Algorand is going to pay 50% of the premiums and the Algorand finance protocol is going to pay another 25%, right? Right. What they're doing by, by subsidizing that cost is saying to their, their users, we want you to be protected. So we're going to put some weight in here with you. We believe this is the way to do it, which yeah. is the right thing to do. But it right. also means that say they have, we're using tons of percentages here, but say they have 80% of all their users because of that subsidy by insurance. Yeah. What's the remaining risk that they would have to protect on their own? It's only 20%. It's not the full 100%. That just makes cost sense for a project and for a user because then the project, the other thing about coming up with capital to reimburse everybody is the PR and the letting people know what happened. And, mm -hmm. you know, the staff and the and the human capital it takes to kind of make all this work and explain it. That's all part of risk mitigation. Like let's try to help them be, let's try to help them be successful, both as yeah. from the users and the projects, and not just say like, yeah, when you get to insurance, we'll give you some money, but then then you're on your own. It should be right. more holistic in nature. And that's that's how this evolved. Got it. You know, we're we're 25 minutes in and I feel like people are like, all right, and they're, they they keep wondering the same question and maybe I'm <laughs> maybe it's just me. But uh, how do you prevent fraud? I think people are probably looking at this and they're like, how do you prevent insurance fraud with cryptocurrency and multiple wallets and things like that? <laughs> and I think that the the um, proper phrasing of the question is when fraud. I yeah, when fraud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, win fraud, uh, Adam. And, and how do you stop it? R O D, but the O has like the line above it. So when I like fraud. it. Oh, so yeah. that's a new. That's a new let's thing. Let's get going on Twitter. Hey, yeah, let's hey, at insure nimble. When fraud? <laughs> when fraud? Let's get it. Let's get it going. I'll start it. <laughs> <laughs> the reality is, like, there's no way to avoid fraud. Like it just right. isn't right. Even in traditional insurance, I mean, exactly. obviously, exactly. that's constantly that what they're trying to prevent too. Right, yeah. exactly. So they spend wild amounts of money on fighting fraud. So right. there's a couple of different ways to think about fraud. One is it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, there are very sophisticated uh, fraudsters and, and that, can, that can do, um, that can try to stay one step ahead of you. So you know that's going to be there. So if you know there's going to be fraud, what do you do to mitigate it? What do you do to lessen it, right? That's right. where that comes in. To me, one of the ways to lessen it is just to take a hard look at how much fraud is there, right? How much fraud is there really? And how much are we spending to fight it? Because say I spend a billion dollars fighting fraud and it turns out that there was one, you know, 
the same amount in fraud. Well, I mean, that's an equal sum game, right? Would there be a way, better way to handle that million we, billion we spent like on to help the community? You're right. Well, that leads you to being proactive. That means that you have to leverage the community. You have to incentivize everyone to be honest and, and productive, uh, but not with an intermediary, right? And then right. you have to leverage the technology. So Xavier is our chief data scientist, and he's done this work for other major traditional insurers. So mm -hmm. we're basically creating the technology to give a confidence score on a claim, right? So that based on all the information we have, based on what we looked at, um, this claim appears to be 90% accurate. Nimble, the corporation, doesn't settle claims. We don't, we don't decide with an in-house team what's a claim. The community does. So this allows the community to look at the information gathered on the submission of the claim and then say, wait a minute, I remember that wallet participated with something over here. They might be able to bring more to the table. Got the it. The more that everyone votes in consensus on a claim, the higher that reward they get for being a part of that, of settling that claim and making someone whole again. So instead of like dinging someone, you're actually rewarding people for doing the right thing. Yeah, right. So I, I guess that leads me to the next thing that I'm wondering is, okay, so there's Nimble, which it provides the platform. It's basically a platform for people to create their own little insurance companies, right? I mean, yeah. on some level, that's that's what's happening. But there are certain things that insurance needs that you, you need these underwriters and these actuaries and you need people to, you know, to be able to uh, come up with these numbers and all that stuff. Right. So um, how how does that work with Nimble? Mm -hmm. And that has been important to me from the beginning, which is why decentralization. Right. Like why? Because it gives insurance professionals the opportunity to participate in a way that they've never participated. So okay. let's take them one by one, right? So if you think of like an actuary, an actuary is like the calculator, right? So the act actuaries typically, they'll look at losses, they'll look at how many claims an insurance company has had, mm -hmm. where those claims happened, how much premium they were taking in, and they'll do projections just like, you know, that's, that's what their role is. And they'll say, we think the rate should be X based on all this information. So they right. develop that. Underwriters, uh, so, so those are actuaries. Insurance companies yeah. have, they have to have them. They, you know, they couldn't exist without them. Right. The other thing insurance companies have is underwriters. So they have a staff of underwriters that then look at the risks and say, all right, so we need to make sure that if anyone is going to be insured with the company that that underwriter works for, that they meet all the guidelines, that the guidelines fit what the actuary was looking at. Right. So they're right. like the gatekeepers, like, you know, all right, the actuaries looked at this risk and they wanted to, they did a whole great table for how to insure a florist shop. And then Cooper just came to me insure, to insure a firework factory. Well then, no, that doesn't fit our model, right? That's right. another way. They kind of do that gatekeeping. It's simple, simplest terms. And then yeah. there's the claims department. So they look at right. information, they settle claims. Um, you know, the appraisers will then appraise damage. What decentralization does is to me, the thing that's been missing from the process is allows all of those parties to participate in insurance without being employed or maybe on the side, side hustle thing, um, by one insurance company. So right. Tiny Man has a risk pool, Cooper has a risk pool, and Adam has a risk pool. We can say, hey, we're looking for underwriters to come make sure that everything in here looks tidy and neat and it's as best as it can be. You mm -hmm. put that call out via smart contract and these underwriters can come in, boom, 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 do their work. You could say, Got I it. need an actuary. I want to make sure our rates are as profitable as they can be for everybody. Again, incentive loop. They come in, right. they do that work. You know, what we always say, we joke about is like, it's about time that there's rock star actuaries and there's rock star underwriters, right? They may be decentralized, but you might be like, yo, underwriter 87563 just made us 50% <laughs> more money. Like, let them have the credit for the work they do and then be paid for it. And then because they help that risk pool become profitable, all those participants are now reaping the rewards of that profitability incentive right. loop again. So they're not just getting a salary. They're getting the better off we are in here, the more profitable it is, the more efficient it is, the better off it is for the whole entire community. 
Okay, so basically, so you're there is going to be some sense of recruitment of these insurance professionals. And when they participate, they're going to get a piece of the pie that the LP providers are getting. And then the underwriter, if they're in, and are they're going to be actuaries and underwriters for each risk pool? I mean, is that is that going to be it's necessary, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So at, the, at launch, we're doing that. We're starting that process so that we make sure there is a real proactive and engaged conversation with our partners because right. they all might have different interests and needs. But after that point, that's when the decentralization comes in where they might say in a year, two years, six months, whatever, mm -hmm. hey, let's pull some other people in and get some more eyes on this. And, and yeah. they can do that. And that's, what right. the, that's where that comes in. Do you anticipate it being a problem getting these insurance professionals involved? or uh, an obstacle or do you think this is going to be pretty pretty easy to get these guys they can do it on the side earn extra income yeah. And might, uh, yeah i think that the way we've set up our roadmap will make it easier mm -hmm. um you know theme of conversation with cooper is mitigation right like everything i'm talking about is what can we do to mitigate like the challenge or the obstacle and we yeah. did that with our roadmap too because we'll launch with the projects We'll, we'll prove that the system we're building is working and provide this level of security and create this incentive loop. And that will help to say to underwriters in the recruiting process, look what we did over here, right? You can come mm -hmm. in and now we're going to start doing uh, what Yannick coined insurance as a service. Yannick is mm -hmm. a tech co-founder. Um, that process is going to need underwriters and actuaries. So when we yeah. get there on our roadmap, it's all leading to that point that maybe you dabbled a little bit as an underwriter, right? Maybe you said, I am so sick of sitting in my office doing the same thing over and over again. Because the reality is a lot of people in insurance understand the pain points in insurance. A lot yeah. of these professionals, they understand it. They're doing great work, but they're hung up on this. I talked to one person, and I won't mention the company, that they were working and they had this, they're a uh, senior vice president of underwriting or whatever. And they had a process that worked and was efficient and they were doing great work and they were profitable every year. And the company, for some reason, then imposed this um, six sign off rule, six. So six different people had to sign off on the work that before two people were signing off on that was already profitable and already yeah. working. So they were upset because they're like, well, now the process that took me one week is taking me six weeks. Yeah. And for me, I'm like, right. And that extra bloat and cost is now going to be passed on <laughs> to the person paying the premium. That doesn't make yeah. any sense. Like, yeah. you know, and I'm sure there's a reason why maybe they got sued, whatever, but right, yeah, right, right. there's a lot of insurance professionals who are like, there's a better way. And, and this is it. Right. So in the end, the way Nimble is decentralized is that anybody can participate in these risk pools. Anybody can be an underwriter or an actuary like these at at launch, like you said, there's going to be some curation of those roles. Right. But the idea is that this fully takes on a life of its own and risk pools are created by with with no like anything that Nimble's doing. This a group of people are like, look, we want to ensure like you were about to actually I'll, I'll, I'll pivot. You were about yeah. to speak um, at N um, NFT NYC. And this is on my yeah. point. I'm pivoting to a point. So we've talked about like a DEX, right? Where we've hinted at like a money market like folks and we can understand how all of that might work. But like with an NFT, like let's just use an example. Let's say that Algawana, the community wants to create a risk pool. What would be the use case that maybe, and they're actually unique because they're an NFT project and also a DAO, I don't know. So maybe you can... Um, yeah, break down like mm -hmm. what an NFT project would, why they would want to come together and create a risk pool for Algon. A great pivot. And first of all, kudos <laughs> to Yannick, who had a 10 minute warning to do my slot talking at NFT NYC because I couldn't get there. My plane wouldn't get there. And he jumped right. up and killed it. So kudos. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Yannick is fantastic. Yep. Yes, he is. Um, so <laughs> great. It's a great use case with NFTs because when we think of insurance as a service, I think NFTs is a good place because each NFT community is going to be unique. I might, I have ideas. Like I think that for NFTs, you could protect, um, you know, you could protect floor, floor price. So you could protect mm -hmm. 
loss of value and started at the floor price. You could protect from security, like hacking. I think one big one is um, commercial rights, protection of violation of commercial rights. But mm. the reality is it should not be me or anybody else telling an NFT community or a DAO, to your point, what they want insurance for. Maybe right. their government says what we really want is to make sure we're all protected if we're sued, right? Like that's what we want. Insurance as a service gives them that ability. Insurance as a service gives Algoana the ability to, you know, go into our portal and say, we want to set up a risk pool for Algoana governors to protect the liability uh, of any bad decisions they may make. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then ca- that same thing will call in underwriters and actuaries to start that process for them, which will then populate a portal a portal for LPs to look and be like, yeah, I want to get involved in this risk pool because the numbers look great. So I'm going to, I'm going to stake here. So, you know, to Algoana, I'm happy. We're happy to talk to you but prior to the insurance as a service. I'm not saying yeah. wait for that because we're happy yeah. to talk to you about a partnership, but that yeah. would be an example of, Oh yeah, that, that is important to us. Or now this came up, it's an important to our community too. So we want to add another line of protection in here and we want underwriters and actuaries to join again and help us out. Yeah. Is there, and I'm just having this idea, but is there a way also for maybe like a newer NFT artist that has a very ambitious uh, roadmap or something to, to maybe give comfort to investors that they're not a rug or something like that? Like, could they take out some, could they create something to where they're like, all right, look, you get mint back. Um, You know, you're insured at at mint. And so what's the risk of me rugging is the only risk is that, um, you you're zero, right? Is, right? I mean, that could be something too, right? Oh, that's a great one, Cooper. I love that because that helps with mass adoption. So if there's a, you know, one of my favorite projects, NFT projects on Algorand is the Gecko, uh, Gecko fam. I, uh-huh. I, I absolutely adore what they're doing, the, what they're doing, the community, it, the art is, is wonderful. Beautiful. And, and, beautiful. And, and so like detailed, just, yeah, oh, really pretty stuff. Creative really pretty and just, stuff. Oh, but you know, I've been, like following them and and buying NFTs from, you know, the beginning. So that's a good example of like, you know, say someone else is coming up like that and they know that their mint is going to be, you know, it, it's going to grow because they, they're they ambitious. It's a perfect example, Cooper, where you could say a couple of ways. We're going to set up this partnership with Nimble or insurance as a service through Nimble, whatever it may be. Um, and we're going to work with the foundation to cover the foundation 50% of premium and we're going to contribute all the way up to like 95% coverage because we believe in what we're doing. That's right. one way. The other way is we're going to take us, you know, 6% royalty as the artist. We're also going to put 1% that automatically goes to a risk pool all the time whenever that NFT is sold, because mm. then we have this robust self-funded you know, almost self-sovereign risk pool that is for the community by the community and then yeah. can engage those outside professionals. I think, um, you know, like I get psyched about what we're building because <laughs> the more conversations <laughs> I have, I'm like, this is super cool. Like this is, it is. The uh, yeah. What, here. Yeah. You what know? you're just, what you're just explaining. I mean, that's like, I think that that would be a, you know, that's such a cool idea and yeah. it'd make people a lot, more um, willing to invest in new projects and, you know, not have to worry. Yeah. And we are working too. We're working with, um, we have a partnership with uh, Verita and we're working on something that isn't, um, you know, officially announced, but it's like a tease, I guess, tease on the Riku. Like we're working with them and the foundation and Verita, we're coming up with the proof of concept where we will be, Nimble will be that certification. So if you go through this process with Nimble, you could... I don't want to say stamp of approval. It's nothing like that, but it gives a user the security of like this product has gone right. through the process with nimble. So right. what person that's going to intentionally go out there and rug pull I- intentionally is yeah. going to go through that process. No, they're not. So it no. gives you a little bit of like, okay, I understand that that still may be a valid project that doesn't want to go through this process, but it indicates to me some level of, okay, that, that makes sense. Maybe they have a reason. Um, right. And, you know, ultimately what it does is provides more adoption for those projects because 
they can say, we believe in security and we're going to use that 50% to our advantage for our users. Right. Right. And I mean, that's like a ver a verification system with like mm -hmm. a little more substance than like, okay, we've done a, a bit of research and it's fine. Yep. Okay. So I, I mean, we can't not talk about this before we sign off here is that the nimble token and how, you know, what are we, how is this all going to work? Like how does mm -hmm. the nimble token work when, when are people actually going to be able to, you know, get when token Adam yeah. and, uh, <laughs> you and all that. To. You have to answer that on Discord. That's up to you. <laughs> yeah, right. So I have an answer, please. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, and launch actually when when you know launch we'll 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 end with that stuff. But let's talk about the Nimble token and what the use case is, the utility of it, and you know how it's going to work in the ecosystem. Yep. I will say right off the bat, anyone can reach out to me at any time, and you know because I, we have some really cool stuff happening with our tokenomics, but it's not, we're not going to get into that here. We'll have to do it another time. But yeah. as far as the general <laughs> use case, yeah, the token would be the form of payment. So if you pulled an underwriter into your risk pool, you would pay them in Nimble. Okay. So that's how they would, to be certified, a certified um, underwriter and go through that process, you then stake Nimble to, to continue along your work within the system. Uh, Nimble will also be used to represent an LP's contribution to to a risk pool. And okay. so that, it'll be their representation of what they have. Um, and I think I covered everything there. So uh, voting on claims, um, um, voting on any kind of protocol things that are changed moving forward when we get to to governance, uh, Nimble token would be used in all of those uh, those ways. Got it. So there's going to be one token and it'll, and it will, it'll have utility. It'll also, so it's kind of like a utility token that also is going to have governance power as well. Yeah. And we'll have to, we'll get to that at some point, the governance side of it, there would probably be a governance token that would be just like everything else you stake and then you get it, you know, Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But we'll go down that road. I'm a firm believer that in order for governance to happen, you kind of have to let governance happen I don't yeah. feel like we can impose what governance is because that would be nimble telling you what governance is instead of letting this community kind of grow and continually monitoring what that looks like for the community <clears throat> right. for the community. And then, you know, that would give us a clearer picture of where to go. And you mentioned it earlier about, you know, the participants in a risk pool are going to have to vote on whether a claim is legit. Now, what I, I guess I can answer my own question, but I'll, I'll let you answer it. <laughs> <laughs> What what's preventing um, all of these people in the risk pool to be like, nah, not paying it. <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, never, yeah. Mind, never mind. Uh, we don't want to yeah. pay it. It's, it's almost it's, uh, three, three days until this expires. We don't want to pay this because we want more. Yeah. You know? Right. We, we, yeah. Right. Yeah. There's so, a couple of reasons. One, and this has gotten to the education challenge. One and the most obvious that I think is often overlooked in insurance is you start denying claims and no one wants to be a part of your risk pool. If right. no one's a part of your risk pool, you don't have any coverage and you have no LPs who will want to give you money. So yeah. a lot of times they say, what's stopping an LP from saying, I'm just going to deny every claim. Well, because you're basically saying, I want to stake money in this risk, stake in this risk pool, but I don't want anybody to give me any money back. Like yeah, yeah. Just work, right? So <laughs> but on top of that, there is a mechanism where everyone who votes in consensus. So if it's an obviously legitimate claim um, and there's just one person who's constantly voting to deny every claim. Yeah. They don't get a piece of the claim reward. Their, their participation, I don't want to call it a score because I know what that means, but for lack of a better word, that's all part of it, right? Like we're incentivizing people to do good for the community. So if people are in there to just do bad, well then, uh -huh. you know, there's, there's a way for us to say, you know, Every, these these people all help the community. So their rewards is is a little bit bigger for that reason. And that's one of the ways we incentivize it. Right. Okay. So how does that work though? How, what, that, who's, who's determining like people's track record and voting and stuff like that? Yeah. So the voting and the track records is just all, just because it's decentralized, that's all done by that, you know, the user or, or claim smart contract so that we know, you know, we, you can watch. We know yeah. just like everybody else would know. You can see like, my God, this wallet address or user address voted no for every single claim. Yeah. Again, the beauty with our roadmap is that we've mitigated that challenge a little bit at the beginning because if there's a protocol smart contract vulnerability exposed, mm -hmm. well, 
it's kind of hard to ha- disagree with it. It, it happened, yeah. right? Yeah. So the voting idea is is good because it gives people that like you really know right away if someone says no to a claim that that yeah. was you know yeah it definitely happened. We're looking at it, um, right. but it allows us to build up. And again, on a decentralized process, we have uh, certified nimbler uh, adju- claims adjusters as well, so they could be pulled in for a heavier vote because of their professional licensing and all those things. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense to me. You know, Nimble's got some incredible backing. I mean, you know, all it takes is going to the website and I encourage everybody to do that. You know, you scroll down, you see Kraken, you see Hivemind, you see um, uh, Algo Big Brain. I love that guy. I love oh that guy. Tom, I've met him. Sounds Tom great. Is about, yeah. yeah. And then you have, um, you, you see Meld, Valhalla, like, so I, I guess, I don't know what my point in, saying that is other than leading me to the idea that oh, when is this when when are we or what is it what is it that you're looking for right now that's what my point was yeah, cool. it's okay there, so so nimble is has a lot of backing it's in, in good shape like what what can people do right now to get involved what does nimble need before launch and when is launch yeah <laughs> so our steps to launch. So launch will be um, end of July. We'll be on testnet, and then we'll you know do our work on testnet, and then and launch a month after or whatever, whatever that may be. Uh, yeah. So let's just say that's Q end of Q three, beginning of Q four, that kind mm-hmm. of thing. Um, what we're doing now is at the end of this week, maybe beginning of next. Uh, let's we'll have what our partner portal set up. So that'll allow us to start the process with partners. So if there are any DeFi projects out there that are interested in offering insurance for their users, they'll be able to go to the portal, fill it out, get it in. And we are going to be proactive in this. And I know some of the pushback is, well, if you're going to be involved, how are you decentralized? And I believe that we covered that. So you could just like rewind and then we'll, we'll <laughs> today, right? like, um, like we, we, we have to get there. We have to take steps. It's yeah. super important to me and to everyone on the nimble team that these projects and these partners are taken care of. I think there's a fear rightfully so in insurance that I'm going to fill out an application. Oh no, I don't want to lie, but I don't want to tell the truth. Cause if I tell the truth, maybe it's going to be too expensive and all this stuff. That's not what we're doing. What we right. are doing is to, we might ask you a question that you, you, you provide us the information and say, why do I need that? Well, our goal isn't to say, gotcha. Our goal is to say like, oh, here's the reasons you should use that. Here's the reason right. why you should use, you know, have audits done regularly. And here's, we're trying to build this community from the bottom, right? So if there's any projects that are interested, they can hit us up on Twitter and just say like, hey, how do I get in line? <laughs> right. Like, yeah. and then once that launches um, from that, I think it's um, if anybody out there is in the insurance field or has relatives in the insurance field, which I can guarantee everybody has relatives in the insurance field. It's that's just yeah. the way it is. Um, yeah. Give them a reason to be an underwriting rock star and an actuary rock star and send yeah. them our way. And we'll, we'll help explain what this is about. Um, so I would say just, you know, yeah. Join us and, and come along. For yeah. the ride. So you said launch um, end of July, early August. Uh, so how does the token, we talked about the token, but like, are, is there going to, is the token coming later or are you thinking that maybe the token is coming before launch or, you know, the what is will, the token will come later? Yeah. Um, you know, and we should have that token um, tokenomics published in um, we're not in July now, right? It's June 28th, not July 28th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So July. So we should have yeah. that. I know, I'm July. talking about July. Like I'm, in my head, I'm thinking, oh, that's a while, but yeah. no, I mean, it's, it's July is like two days away. Two days away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we will have, uh, in July, we will, we will release, um, the tokenomics to show everyone what that's about and other documentation about the process, kind of everything we've talked about as well. Gooper will be coming yeah. out in, as Alana said little snackable bits of insurance information. So, right, right, you right. know, all of this will be more uh, digestible for people moving forward. 
they can dig in as deep as they want, or they can say, just let me know when I can push the purchase cover button. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, okay. exactly. <laughs> yeah. They're yeah. like, I mean, exactly. I mean, at some point they're like, okay, well I'm putting 15 grand worth of value in tiny man. And I know something happened in the beginning of the year. I'd like to be protected. And if that's going to be subsidized by the foundation and tiny sure. man, and then I'm paying like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm paying a fifth of um, a premium that was already competitive. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, yeah. Why am I not doing right. this? I'm going to do exactly it. it. So it you, that's all you really need to. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> or you can be a little bit more um, involved than you can actually get on the other side of that. Being like, look, Tiny Man figured that thing out in the earlier. Exactly. I don't think I don't think that these people that's clearly going well. There's I don't I like that risk. And if I can get this certain APY, if everything goes well and and then earn that's nimble great, token. Yep. And then earn nimble token. And this is actually a really good idea. They're basically the only person doing this and they're sanctioned by the Algorand Foundation. And, um, you know, Algorand is the future of finance. So why wouldn't they be the future of decentralized insurance? I can get a little action with my nimble. That should grow. Look, I'm making See, a pitch for you, man. No, but I, yeah, you're good at it. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I love that you brought that up because it's not fair to continually like, it, we, and it's funny because I use Tiny Man not because of what happened with Tiny Man, but because I've always loved what they've done from the beginning. I've loved yeah. their design and their team and their work. Um, you know, so, but it's important to say that. You're absolutely right. The flip side of it is Tiny Man, first of all, handled it well. You know, they yeah. handled what happened. They were transparent. They worked as hard as they could, you know, to get it, make people whole again. They they did what they could. So, yeah. Yeah, you flip that around. If I'm an insured, sure, I want to make sure it doesn't happen again. If I'm an LP, I want in on that because <laughs> they've, yes. you know, it, it'll be a less loss ratio. There'll be less claims paid out. And yeah. that means the premiums will be lower and the reward will be higher. So it's a great example of like, you know, an option. And never mind to get to the fact where, you know, who knows, FIFA starts releasing, you know, player card NFTs and you want to insure your, you know, Mbappe Messy. card because you never know what's going to happen. To, you know, we got, we don't, and Cooper can speak to this. We do not have a lack of ideas at Nimble. Like there is no, no, <laughs> yeah, our, no our meeting, ideas. Yeah, our, <laughs> our meeting yesterday was full of ideas. Yeah, it's great. It's awesome. So it's 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 about rounding us all up to execute and which we do well. Which too. which yeah, which is only that's only happened. And you know, I know you you got started on this not so long ago, and it just keeps on escalating. And like you mentioned, I I have firsthand knowledge of the team, a bunch of great, you know, intelligent, capable people building something really cool. So I mean, I'm excited about it. I think a lot of I see it, I see it on Twitter. People are excited about it. And they want this option and it can be a game changer. So um, I'm, I'm obviously rooting for you and the, and the team. And uh, yeah, is there anything that I, that I didn't, what did I not mention? Is there anything I didn't mention? Did we do no, this? No, I think, I mean, for me, I like to always say at the end of any time I talk to anyone is like, get your, you know, do what you can for mental health, like get yourself. There's, there's a variety, as we all know, of different ways um, to, to get help, to talk mm -hmm. to someone. If you really feel like you don't have anyone to talk to, honestly, reach out to me. I'll do the best I can. Um, well, that, that's always been part of my journey. And I made the promise to myself that as I went through that, that I would always be, um, I would say this all the time that like, you deserve to have your mental health in check. You deserve to feel good about who you are and not feel like you're, you know, a, a broken, something's broken. That That's not the case. And this space in blockchain and crypto, this is the space like where we can all help each other out and, and do that. So I always want to end with that and just say, you know, what I understand that not everyone has the opportunities, but whatever you can do for your mental health, lean on Absolutely. someone. Absolutely. And that is a fantastic way to end this. And unfortunately, I realized we didn't ask a question. I didn't, oh. we didn't answer. There's one more question, but I want to say, uh, yeah, why algorithm? We never <laughs> talked about that. But I, yeah. I do want to say about what you said about mental health. Now, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be linked to money and all of that, but there, this space right now is so volatile and people are losing their savings. And so there is a lot of desperation now, even without that, 
you know, uh, we we all struggle to some degree. I do want to hear what you have to say about like, what is it about Algorand and why did you land on Algorand? Yeah. So Al, uh, when I started this process, I had a, a, a list of the chains that I would have liked to, that I would like to work with. Mm-hmm. At the top, honestly, was Algorand. Algorand was introduced to me by one of uh, my advisors, David Dufresne. He's Panache Ventures from Canada. Uh, but he founded that or, or was founding partner of that. He's moved on. Um, great guy. But he introduced me to Algorand. I did a re- little bit of research, loved the team. Mm-hmm. Uh, loved the fact that they weren't trying to be like super sexy out the gate. They were trying to get their tech in order. And I get it. Listen, I've heard it. You, we talk about this Cooper, like no one cares about how good their tech is. That's fine. Like I, you know, I do cause I'm building insurance on top of something. So they were <laughs> yeah. at the top of my list because their tech was great. They're, you know, no downtime. Um, it, sustainable from both like the environment and from, you know, economic standpoint, um, Silvio, I mean, could anybody get any smarter? You know, it's, it's this great team. Um, yeah. it sealed the deal for me when I was introduced to Steve Kakinos, the CEO, and he loved what we were doing. He actually invested in us personally before we even had a team. He was like, right. you, what you're doing is unique and, you got to go with this. So yeah. once that happened, I was like, okay, so they're on the top of my list. They check all my boxes and, you know, the CEO's down with what we're doing. It was like yeah. a no brainer. And from there it's, it's only, you know, the community just makes it even better. It's like the community is the icing on the cake. It's like, yeah. unbelievable. not just right. the icing yeah. on the cake. Right. Because that that's not fair. It's like the icing on the cake, but then the icing on between every layer of the cake. So right. Right. Like, right. Oh yeah. There it is again. You know, yeah. <laughs> That's an underestimated uh, part when you talk about the frosting or the icing. It's in the middle too. It's throughout oh, the cake. Oh, you get that, and you're like, you there it is it. again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes a lot of sense. Um, all right. Well, thank you, Adam, for taking the time to do this. I hope we, I hope we covered it. I hope it's clear. And if anybody has any questions, you can always reach out to me. You can reach out to Adam. Join the Discord. Um, visit the website. Follow Nimble on uh, Twitter. I'll put all the links in the description of this video. So. Perfect. All Thanks, right, great. Cooper. I'm really glad we got to do it. Yeah, me too. All Good right, stuff. talk to you later. Talk See to you ya. soon. Yeah.